Hello! I've been wanting to read more nonfiction and a subject that I'm really interested in but have very little technical knowledge about is science. So I enjoy following the Royal Society Science Book Prize which celebrates the best new literature in popular science. They've been going for over 35 years and I really enjoyed reading last year's winner A Very Short History of Life on Earth by Henry G. I find reading scientific books like this so fascinating because they're written by experts but in an engaging way that I can actually understand and learn from. Now the six titles that have been shortlisted for this year's award were just announced recently and here they are. I'm steadily reading my way through these books. I'm gonna give brief overviews of uh, each of these titles and not only did the prize kindly send me all of these books but they also invited me to the Royal Society itself which is this impressive historic building in the heart of London. Luckily it was a beautiful sunny day in the city. Probably one of the last warm days will get this year so it was nice taking a stroll there. The Royal Society was established in 1660 when it was granted a charter by Charles II. Its fellowship has included many of the most eminent scientists from the past few centuries. I was able to spot many of their portraits throughout from Albert Einstein to John Locke to Christopher Wren. It is so beautiful inside. There are ornate ceilings in many of its massive rooms and it has expansive libraries which include so many scientific texts and periodicals. I loved taking my time in these tranquil rooms and flipping through a variety of titles. It has a very impressive collection of rare scientific books and I got to hold and flip through an actual first edition of The Origin of Species. It's wild looking through this book knowing what a tremendous influence it's had on our culture and imagining what it was like for scientists and the public to read it for the first time. The books on this year's shortlist encompass a range of subject matter so looking through the very old texts at the society gave me this appreciation for how the most recent developments have been built upon research from the past. This includes early studies on how birds and different creatures fly and the way this is contributed to the science of flight the engineering of objects we use in our everyday lives and the science of making daily life cleaner and easier, the neuroscience and study of jellyfish and how these curious creatures inhabit the world in a way very different from humans, the development of vaccines and medical methods of combating new illnesses, the early teachings of female scientists who struggled to establish a place in a field dominated by men, and how the structure and internal workings of the human body differs from that of animals. So it was a pleasure to take a tour through the Royal Society and look through these treasures because it made me even more excited to explore the new research being described in these books. The winner for this year's award is going to be announced on November 22nd and I'll put links in the description below so you can find out more about the prize and the Royal Society. Now I'm going to go through each of these books and give a brief overview of this year's shortlist. First there is An Immense World How Animal Senses Reveal the Hidden Realms Around Us by Ed Yun who's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and he's been shortlisted for this award award in the past. Now we as humans can become so accustomed to how we sense the world around us that we come to believe this is the way the world actually is. 
But for many creatures on this planet, they perceive it in a very different way from how we do. And I think most of us know this, but we can forget it so easily. So Ed Yun describes a whole range of creatures and how they see and hear and, and taste and, and feel the world around us in a way that's, that's very different from us. And he illustrates this uh, at one point with these two pictures of a dog. And on the top, you can see how we humans mostly see it. And then on the bottom, how dogs are more likely to see it. And I find this so mind blowing to consider and, and think about. And I think after reading this book, you really see and, and hear and feel the world around you in a way that's like completely different from how you normally do. And uh, the judges say about this book that it's a masterpiece that unlocks new dimensions in the human imagination. I remember reading about this book towards the end of last year because it was on many like best books of the year lists and Barack Obama was a fan. And I also really like how there's an owl on the back cover. Jellyfish age backwards. Nature Secrets to Longevity by Nicholas Brendborg, who at 28 years old is the youngest author to have ever been listed for this award. I can't believe he's only 28 years old and is already an accomplished scientist. So this book looks at uh, jellyfish, but also a number of different creatures like the naked mole rat to show how they age in a way that is very different from how humans do. I mean, we humans, we have our a normal life cycle that we go through, but actually a lot of other creatures also have a very different way of, of aging. And so jellyfish, um, in certain circumstances, um, they can actually age backwards, which is so wild to think about. The judges say it delights with surprises throughout and it's very hard to put down. And I'm currently reading this now and I'm certain finding that. Taking Flight, The Evolutionary Story of Life on the Wing by Lev Parakan. This is looking at the history of the development of flight in a number of different creatures of, of birds and insects and mammals, uh, both in ancient history and more recent times. Um, so he explores 14 different creatures on um, which you can see uh, listed in the uh, table of contents here. And it doesn't just look at flapping wings flying, but also gliding and hovering and different reasons for flight from migratory purposes um, to uh, evading um, being hunted. And the judges say, after reading this, you'll never look at a bird or bat or beetle the same way again. The Exceptions by Kate Zernicki. A woman named Nancy Hopkins began studying science in the 1960s, and by 1999, she had become a very respected molecular geneticist and cancer researcher at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But she had been being discriminated against for years because she is a woman in a field that is dominated by male scientists. So in that year, 1999, she decided to create a campaign with a number of other female scientists to raise awareness about this issue. And it created ripples throughout the scientific community. So this book is an examination of that history and how this is still an ongoing issue uh, that's occurring today. Uh, the judges said this is a gripping page turner backed by extensive research. And you'll notice that on the cover, um, it says uh, Outstanding uh, by Bonnie Garmis, um, who is the, the writer of the novel Lessons in Chemistry, um, which has been a very popular book. And she is actually one of the judges for this year's prize. Breathless, the scientific race to defeat a deadly virus by David Quammen. This is about very recent history and the development of a vaccine to help control the virus responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. It explores how coronavirus is something that we're all going to have to, to live with some form with it being in our population and um, about why it occurred and how more instances of this might occur in the future. And I found it very 
relatable reading the the judges comments and how they um they said I didn't think I would ever want to read a book about the pandemic, but I truly have to applaud Kwamen for his expert storytelling that kept me gripped and informed throughout. And finally, there is Nuts and Bolts, seven small inventions that changed the world in a big way. This is looking at those small, seemingly inconsequential things in our lives, like wheels and springs, and lenses which we take for granted but which our modern worlds literally wouldn't function without them and she gives us the story behind them and how they were developed and incorporated into our everyday lives. So the judges say this feat of science writing itself beautifully designed and well structured will encourage you to appreciate the simple but ingenious technology on which our world is built. And actually Rom Roma Agrawal is a structural engineer um, that worked for many years on the tower known as the Shard in London, um, which I walked past and featured at the beginning of this video. Um, so she's actually partly you know, responsible for that building, which is the tallest tower in Western Europe. Um, so it just shows you how you, know, you can take these things around you for granted, not thinking about the stories and, and the people that went into creating them. So those are the six books on the shortlist. Like I said, the, the winner will be announced on November 22nd. I'd love to hear if you are interested in reading any of these books now, and if you're planning on reading any of them, or if you have read any of them, what do you think about them? Let me know in the comments below. But I'd also be keen to hear any other science books that you've read recently and really enjoyed and that you want to recommend to me. I'd, I'd love to hear about that. So thank you for watching me discuss this prize and all of these books. I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.